Okay, and so what will be the geopolitical consequences uh, of, of the war on Ukraine, beyond Ukraine, obviously? This is a war that has changed Europe forever. Uh, the assumptions that we had about Europe being forever safe, about the borders being unchangeable, about our laws on human rights and on uh, conventions on genocide, uh, all those things that we've been taking for granted for so many decades, this is now over. Um, this is a war that moves us into a different era, uh, one in which Europe may have to defend itself, may have to even begin to produce weapons and ammunition at a much higher rate than it expected. Um, and it will have to, it will eventually end with a new set of security guarantees one way or the other. Uh, thinking up what, what will be the new shape of NATO, how will we prevent a war like this from happening in the future, and what will, how will we, in specific, specifically, how will we guarantee the security of Ukraine? You're a Russia watcher. Um, should we have known, should we have seen signs that there could be another shooting war in Europe, or uh, is anyone forgiven for not thinking that this kind of war would happen again? Actually, Putin made it very clear for a long time that he had aims on its neighbors. He, he invaded Georgia. Um, he invaded Ukraine in 2014. Uh, he helped with the invasion of Syria, which is not on his borders, but it shows his ambition. Um, we weren't paying attention when he was telling us that he was interested in reconstructing the Soviet Empire, um, which he would now call the Russian Empire. Um, and, and, and yes, I'm afraid we are to blame for not listening, not catching the warning signs, and above all, for not thinking about the consequences for Ukraine and for NATO. And so does NATO need to now expand and let Ukraine in, despite um, possibly having Crimea not freed? I mean, is this, is this what Ukraine needs and what NATO um, owes it? I, the, the, war will, the war will end when Russia changes. So the war will end when the Russians conclude that it was a mistake, when they understand that the Russian Empire cannot be reconstructed and that that era is over. Um, how we get to that point, there are many different ways. Uh, one of the ways will be military victory from Ukraine. Um, and there may be also, we may be able to use sanctions. We may eventually be able to use diplomacy. Um, but that will be the way that it changes, and it will have to end in some, um, with some new security guarantees for the continent. I can't tell you what they are now because I don't know what the, you know, what the state of the world will be next week or even six months from now. Uh, so, but, but that is how it will end. And are you, on the, are you of, of the position that it's no time for Ukraine to talk peace right now, that there needs to be more uh, military superiority before anyone should talk to Ukraine about discussing this with Moscow? So right now, there is no one to talk to because Putin has made it clear that his war aims remain the same. His war aim is to conquer Ukraine, take Kiev, create a puppet state. So right now, there isn't a conversation to have, and there are people trying to have those conversations. So it's not as if no one has thought of it. Um, as I said, the war will end when Russia changes, when, like France and Algeria, or like Britain and Ireland, when Russia understands that it is no longer an imperial power and that the age of empire is over. And we have to help Russia get to that point, and one of the ways we can do it is by helping Ukraine take its territory back. Thank you very much. Thank you.